Apatosaurus, Wikipedia article audio. Apatosaurus meaning deceptive lizard is a genus of extinct sauropod dinosaurs that lived in North America during the late Jurassic period. Othniel Charles Marsh described and named the first known species, A. Ajax, in 1877, and a second species, A. Lucy, was discovered and named by William H. Holland in 1916. Apatosaurus lived about 152 to 151 million years ago, during the early Tithonian age, and are now known from fossils in the Morrison Formation of modern-day Colorado, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Utah in the United States. Apatosaurus had an average length of 2122.8 m, and an average mass of 16.422.4 t. A few specimens indicate a maximum length of 11.30% greater than average and a mass of 32.772.6 t. The cervical vertebrae of Apatosaurus are less elongated and more heavily constructed than those of Diplodocus, a diplodocid like Apatosaurus, and the bones of the leg are much stockier despite being longer, implying that Apatosaurus was a more robust animal. The tail was held above the ground during normal locomotion. Apatosaurus had a single claw on each forelimb and three on each hind limb. The Apatosaurus skull, long thought to be similar to Camarasaurus, is much more similar to that of Diplodocus. Apatosaurus was a generalized browser that likely held its head elevated. To lighten its vertebrae, Apatosaurus had air sacs that made the bones internally full of holes. Like that of other diplodocids, its tail may have been used as a whip to create loud noises. Description Discovery and Species The skull of Apatosaurus was confused with that of Camarasaurus and Brachiosaurus until 1909, when the holotype of A. Lucy was found and a complete skull just a few meters away from the front of the neck. Henry Fairfield Osborne disagreed with this association, and went on to mount a skeleton of Apatosaurus with a Camarasaurus skull cast. Until 1970, Apatosaurus skeletons were mounted with speculative skull casts, when Macintosh showed that more robust skulls assigned to Diplodocus were more likely from Apatosaurus. Apatosaurus is a genus in the family Diplodocidae. It is one of the more basal genera, with only Amphicoelius and possibly a new, unnamed genus more primitive. While the subfamily Apatosaurini was named in 1929, the group was not used validly until an extensive 2015 study. Only Brontosaurus is also in the subfamily with the other genera being considered synonyms or reclassified as diplodocins. Brontosaurus has long been considered a junior synonym of Apatosaurus, its only species was reclassified as A. excelsus in 1903. A 2015 study concluded that Brontosaurus is a valid genus of sauropod distinct from Apatosaurus, but not all paleontologists agree with this division. As it existed in North America during the late Jurassic, Apatosaurus would have lived alongside dinosaurs such as Allosaurus, Camarasaurus, Diplodocus, and Stegosaurus. Apatosaurus was a large, long-necked, quadrupedal animal with a long, whip-like tail. Its forelimbs were slightly shorter than its hind limbs. Most size estimates are based on specimen CM3018, the type specimen of A. Lucy. In 1936 this was measured to be 21.8 m, by measuring the vertebral column. Current estimates are similar, finding that the individual was 21.22.8 m long and had a mass of 16.422.4 t. 
a 2015 study that estimated the mass of volumetric models of Dreadnoughtus, Apatosaurus, and Giraffatitan estimates CM 3018 at 21.838.2 t, similar in mass to Dreadnoughtus. Past estimates have put the creature's mass as high as 35.0 tons. Some specimens of A. ajax represent individuals 11-30% longer, suggesting masses twice that of CM 3018 or 32.772.6 t, potentially rivaling the largest titanosaurs. The skull is small in relation to the size of the animal. The jaws are lined with spatula teeth suited to an herbivorous diet. The snout of Apatosaurus and similar diplodocoids is squared, with only Nigersaurus having a squarer skull. The brain case of Apatosaurus is well preserved in specimen BYU 17096, which also preserved much of the skeleton. A phylogenetic analysis found that the brain case had a morphology similar to those of other diplodocoids. Some skulls of Apatosaurus have been found still in articulation with their teeth. Those teeth that have the enamel surface exposed do not show any scratches on the surface, instead, they display a sugary texture and little wear. Like those of other sauropods, the neck vertebrae are deeply bifurcated, they carried neural spines with a large trough in the middle, resulting in a wide, deep neck. The vertebral formula for the holotype of A. Lucy is 15 cervicals, 10 dorsals, 5 sacrals, and 82 caudals. The caudal vertebra number may vary, even within species. The cervical vertebrae of Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus are stouter and more robust than those of other diplodocids and were found to be most similar to Camarasaurus by Charles Whitney Gilmore. In addition, they support cervical ribs that extend farther towards the ground than in diplodocins, and have vertebrae and ribs that are narrower towards the top of the neck, making the neck nearly triangular in cross-section. In Apatosaurus lucy, the atlas, axis complex of the first cervicals is nearly fused. The dorsal ribs are not fused or tightly attached to their vertebrae and are instead loosely articulated. Apatosaurus has ten dorsal ribs on either side of the body. The large neck was filled with an extensive system of weight-saving air sacs. Apatosaurus, like its close relative Supersaurus, has tall neural spines, which make up more than half the height of the individual bones of its vertebrae. The shape of the tail is unusual for a diplodocid. It is comparatively slender because of the rapidly decreasing height of the vertebral spines with increasing distance from the hips. Apatosaurus also had very long ribs compared to most other diplodocids, giving it an unusually deep chest. As in other diplodocids, the tail transformed into a whip-like structure towards the end. Valid Species the limb bones are also very robust. Within Apatosaurini, the scapula of Apatosaurus lucy is intermediate in morphology between those of A. ajax and Brontosaurus excelsus. The arm bones are stout, so the humerus of Apatosaurus resembles that of Camarasaurus, as well as Brontosaurus. However, the humor eye of Brontosaurus and A. Ajax are more similar to each other than they are to A. Lucy. In 1936 Charles Gilmore noted that previous reconstructions of Apatosaurus forelimbs erroneously proposed that the radius and ulna could cross, in life they would have remained parallel. Apatosaurus had a single large claw on each forelimb, a feature shared by all sauropods more derived than Chinosaurus. The first three toes had claws on each hind limb. The phalangeal formula is 2-1-1-1-1, meaning the innermost finger on the forelimb has two bones and the next has one. 
The single manual claw bone is slightly curved and squarely truncated on the anterior end. The pelvic girdle includes the robust ilia, and the fused pubes and ischia. The femora of Apatosaurus are very stout and represent some of the most robust femora of any member of Sauropoda. The tibia and fibula bones are different from the slender bones of Diplodocus but are nearly indistinguishable from those of Camarasaurus. The fibula is longer and slenderer than the tibia. The foot of Apatosaurus has three claws on the innermost digits. The digit formula is 3-4-5-3-2. The first metatarsal is the stoutest, a feature shared among diplodocids. The name Apatosaurus Ajax was coined in 1877 by Othniel Charles Marsh, professor of paleontology at Yale University based on a nearly complete skeleton discovered in the eastern foothills of the Rocky Mountains in Gunnison County, Colorado. The composite term Apatosaurus comes from the Greek words apat slash apatlos meaning deception slash deceptive, and soros meaning lizard, thus, deceptive lizard. Marsh gave it this name based on the chevron bones, which are dissimilar to those of other dinosaurs, Instead, the chevron bones of Apatosaurus showed similarities with those of Mosasaurs. During excavation and transportation, the bones of the holotype skeleton were mixed with those of another Apatosaurus individual originally described as Atlantosaurus imanes. As a consequence, some elements cannot be ascribed to either specimen with confidence. Marsh distinguished the new genus Apatosaurus from Atlantosaurus on the basis of the number of sacral vertebrae, with Apatosaurus possessing three and Atlantosaurus four. Two years later, Marsh announced the discovery of a larger and more complete specimen at Como Bluff, Wyoming. He gave this specimen a new name based on the conventions of his age and the relatively sparse fossil record available at that time. It was later recognized that the features he had used to distinguish genera and species were in fact more widespread among sauropods. He named the new species Brontosaurus excelsus. All specimens currently considered Apatosaurus were from the Morrison Formation, the location of the excavations of Marsh and his rival Edward Drinker Cope. Reassigned Species Another specimen, in the American Museum of Natural History under specimen number 460, which is occasionally assigned to Apatosaurus, is considered nearly complete, only the head, feet and sections of the tail are missing, and it was the first sauropod skeleton mounted. The specimen was found north of Medicine Bow, Wyoming in 1898 by Walter Granger, and took the entire summer to extract. To complete the mount, sauropod feet that were discovered at the same quarry and a tail fashioned to appear as Marsh believed it should but which had too few vertebrae were added. In addition, a sculpted model of what the museum thought the skull of this massive creature might look like was made. This was not a delicate skull like that of Diplodocus which was later found to be more accurate but was based on the biggest, thickest, strongest skull bones, lower jaws and tooth crowns from three different quarries. These skulls were likely those of Camarasaurus, the only other sauropod for which good skull material was known at the time. The mound construction was overseen by Adam Herman who failed to find Apatosaurus skulls. Herman was forced to sculpt a stand-in skull by hand. Osborne said in a publication that the skull was largely conjectural and based on that of Morosaurus. In 1903 Elmer Riggs published a study that described a well-preserved skeleton of a diplodocid from the Grand River Valley near Fruita, Colorado. Field Museum of Natural History Specimen P25112. 
Riggs thought that the deposits were similar in age to those of the Como Bluff in Wyoming from which Marsh had described Brontosaurus. Most of the skeleton was found, and after comparison with both Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus Ajax, Riggs realized that the holotype of A. Ajax was immature, and thus the features distinguishing the genera were not valid. Since Apatosaurus was the earlier name, Brontosaurus should be considered a junior synonym of Apatosaurus. Because of this, Riggs recombined Brontosaurus excelsus as Apatosaurus excelsus. Based on comparisons with other species proposed to belong to Apatosaurus, Riggs also determined that the Field Columbian Museum specimen was likely most similar to A. excelsus. Despite Riggs' publication, Henry Fairfield Osborne, who was a strong opponent of Marsh and his taxa, labeled the Apatosaurus mount of the American Museum of Natural History Brontosaurus. Because of this decision the name Brontosaurus was commonly used outside of scientific literature for what Riggs considered Apatosaurus, and the museum's popularity meant that Brontosaurus became one of the best-known dinosaurs, even though it was invalid throughout nearly all of the 20th and early 21st centuries. Classification it was not until 1909 that an Apatosaurus skull was found during the first expedition, led by Earl Douglas, to what would become known as the Carnegie Quarry at Dinosaur National Monument. The skull was found a short distance from a skeleton identified as the new species Apatosaurus lucy, named after Louise Carnegie, wife of Andrew Carnegie who funded field research to find complete dinosaur skeletons in the American West. The skull was designated CM11162, it was very similar to the skull of Diplodocus. Another smaller skeleton of A. Lucy was found nearby CM11162 and CM3018. The skull was accepted as belonging to the Apatosaurus specimen by Douglas and Carnegie Museum director William H. Holland, although other scientists most notably Osborne rejected this identification. Holland defended his view in 1914 in an address to the Paleontological Society of America, yet he left the Carnegie Museum Mount headless. While some thought Holland was attempting to avoid conflict with Osborne, others suspected Holland was waiting until an articulated skull and neck were found to confirm the association of the skull and skeleton. After Holland's death in 1934, museum staff placed a cast of a Camarasaurus skull on the mount. Paleobiology while most other museums were using cast or sculpted Camarasaurus skulls on Apatosaurus mounts, the Yale Peabody Museum decided to sculpt a skull based on the lower jaw of a Camarasaurus, with the cranium based on Marsh's 1891 illustration of the skull. The skull also included forward-pointing nasals something different to any dinosaur and fenestri differing from both the drawing and other skulls. Neck Posture No Apatosaurus skull was mentioned in literature until the 1970s when John Stanton Macintosh and David Berman redescribed the skulls of Diplodocus and Apatosaurus. They found that though he never published his opinion, Holland was almost certainly correct, that Apatosaurus had a Diplodocus-like skull. According to them, Many skulls long thought to pertain to Diplodocus might instead be those of Apatosaurus. They reassigned multiple skulls to Apatosaurus based on associated and closely associated vertebrae. Even though they supported Holland, it was noted that Apatosaurus might have possessed a Camarasaurus-like skull, based on a disarticulated Camarasaurus-like tooth found at the precise site where an Apatosaurus specimen was found years before. On October 20, 1979, after the publications by Macintosh and Berman, 
the first true skull of Apatosaurus was mounted on a skeleton in a museum, that of the Carnegie. In 1998 it was suggested that the Felch quarry skull that Marsh had included in his 1896 skeletal restoration instead belonged to Brachiosaurus. In 2011 the first specimen of Apatosaurus where a skull was found articulated with its cervical vertebrae was described. This specimen, CMCVP 7180, was found to differ in both skull and neck features from A. Lucy, but shared many features of the cervical vertebrae with A. Ajax. Another well-preserved skull is Brigham Young University specimen 17096, a well-preserved skull and skeleton, with a preserved brain case. The specimen was found in Cactus Park Quarry in western Colorado. Almost all modern paleontologists agreed with Riggs that the two dinosaurs should be classified together in a single genus. According to the rules of the ICZN, the name Apatosaurus, having been published first, has priority as the official name, Brontosaurus was considered a junior synonym and was therefore long discarded from formal use. Despite this, at least one paleontologist Robert T. Backer argued in the 1990s that A. Ajax and A. Excelsis were in fact sufficiently distinct for the latter to merit a separate genus. Physiology In 2015 Emmanuel Chop, Octavio Matias and Roger Benson released a paper on diplodocoid systematics and proposed that genera could be diagnosed by 13 differing characters, and species separated based on 6. The minimum number for generic separation was chosen based on the fact that A. Ajax and A. Lucy differ in 12 characters, and Diplodocus carnegie and D. Holorum differ in 11 characters. Thus, 13 characters were chosen to validate the separation of genera. The six differing features for specific separation were chosen by counting the number of differing features in separate specimens generally agreed to represent one species, with only one differing character in D. Carnegie and A. Lucy, but five differing features in B. Excelsis. Therefore, Chop Etal argued that Apatosaurus Excelsis, originally classified as Brontosaurus Excelsis, had enough morphological differences from other species of Apatosaurus that it warranted being reclassified as a separate genus again. The conclusion was based on a comparison of 477 morphological characteristics across 81 different dinosaur individuals. Among the many notable differences are the wider and presumably stronger neck of Apatosaurus species compared to B. excelsis. Other species previously assigned to Apatosaurus, such as Elosaurus parvus and Eobrontosaurus yonopin were also reclassified as Brontosaurus. Some features proposed to separate Brontosaurus from Apatosaurus include, posterior dorsal vertebrae with the centrum longer than wide, the scapula rear to the acromyle edge and the distal blade being excavated the acromyle edge of the distal scapular blade bearing a rounded expansion, and the ratio of the proximodistal length to transverse breadth of the astragalus 0.55 or greater. Sauropod expert Michael Daniel D. E. Mick pointed out that the criteria chosen were to an extent arbitrary and that they would require abandoning the name Brontosaurus again if newer analyses obtained different results. Mammal paleontologist Donald Prothero criticized the mass media reaction to this study as superficial and premature, concluding that he would keep Brontosaurus in quotes and not treat the name as a valid genus. Many species of Apatosaurus have been designated from scant material. Marsh named as many species as he could which resulted in many being based upon fragmentary and indistinguishable remains. 
In 2005 Paul Upchurch and colleagues published a study that analyzed the species and specimen relationships of Apatosaurus. They found that A. lucy was the most basal species, followed by FMNHP25112, and then a polytomy of A. ajax, A. parvus, and A. excelsus. Their analysis was revised and expanded with many additional diplodocid specimens in 2015, which resolved the relationships of Apatosaurus slightly differently, and also supported separating Brontosaurus from Apatosaurus. The cladogram below is the result of an analysis by Chop, Matthias, and Benson. The authors analyzed most diplodocid type specimens separately to deduce which specimen belonged to which species and genus. YPM 1840 NSMT PV 20375 Growth AMNH 460 Juveniles YPM 1860 Apatosaurus Ajax was named by Marsh in 1877 after Ajax, a hero from Greek mythology. Marsh designated the incomplete, juvenile skeleton YPM 1860 as its holotype. The species is less studied than Brontosaurus and A. Lucy especially because of the incomplete nature of the holotype. In 2005 many specimens in addition to the holotype were found assignable to A. Ajax, YPM 1840, NSMT PV 20375, YPM 1861, and AMNH 460. The specimens date from the late Kimmeridgian to the early Tythonian ages. In 2015 only the A. Ajax holotype YPM 1860 assigned to the species, with AMNH 460 found either to be within Brontosaurus, or potentially its own taxon. However, YPM 1861 and NSMT PV 20375 only differed in a few characteristics, and cannot be distinguished specifically or generically from A. Ajax. YPM 1861 is the holotype of Atlantosaurus imanes, which means it might be a junior synonym of A. Ajax. Apatosaurus lucy was named by Holland in 1916, being first known from a partial skeleton that was found in Utah. The holotype is CM 3018, with referred specimens including CM 3378, CM 11162, and LACM 52844. The former two consist of a vertebral column, the latter two consist of a skull and a nearly complete skeleton, respectively. Apatosaurus lucy specimens all come from the late Kimmeridgian of Dinosaur National Monument. In 2015 CHOP ETAL found the type specimen of Apatosaurus laticollis to nest closely with CM 3018 meaning the former is likely a junior synonym of A. lucy. CM 3018 YPM 1861 YPM 1980 Tail Paleoecology YPM 1981 AMNH 5764 FMNH P25112 Tate 001 CM 566 UM 15556 BYU 1252 to 18531 Apatosaurus is a member of the family Diplodocidae 
a clade of gigantic sauropod dinosaurs. The family includes some of the longest creatures ever to walk the Earth, including Diplodocus, Supersaurus, and Barosaurus. Apatosaurus is sometimes classified in the subfamily Apatosaurini, which may also include Suwasi, Supersaurus, and Brontosaurus. Othniel Charles Marsh described Apatosaurus as allied to Atlantosaurus within the now defunct group Atlantosauridae. In 1878 Marsh raised his family to the rank of suborder, including Apatosaurus, Atlantosaurus, Morosaurus, and Diplodocus. He classified this group within Sauropoda, a group he erected in the same study. In 1903 Elmer S. Riggs said the name Sauropoda would be a junior synonym of earlier names, he grouped Apatosaurus within Apisthocilia. Sauropoda is still used as the group name. In 2011, John Whitlock published a study that placed Apatosaurus a more basal diplodocid, sometimes less basal than Supersaurus. Cladogram of the Diplodocidae after Chop, Matthias, and Benson. Amphicolius altus. Unnamed species. Apatosaurus ajax. Apatosaurus lucy. Brontosaurus excelsus. Brontosaurus yonapin. Brontosaurus parvus. Unnamed species. Torneria africana. Supersaurus laurenhanensis. Supersaurus viviani. Line cupel lati cauda. Galimapus hayi. Diplodocus carnegai. Diplodocus holorum. Cotdocus siberi. Barosaurus lentus. It was believed throughout the 19th and early 20th centuries that sauropods like Apatosaurus were too massive to support their own weight on dry land. It was theorized that they lived partly submerged in water, perhaps in swamps. More recent findings do not support this, sauropods are now thought to have been fully terrestrial animals. A study of diplodocid snouts showed that the square snout, large proportion of pits, and fine, subparallel scratches of the teeth of Apatosaurus suggests it was a ground height, non-selective browser. It may have eaten ferns, psychodioids, seed ferns, horsetails, and algae. Stevens and Parrish speculate that these sauropods fed from riverbanks on submerged water plants. A 2015 study of the necks of Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus found many differences between them and other diplodocids, and that these variations may have shown that the necks of Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus were used for intraspecific combat. Various uses for the single claw on the forelimb of sauropods have been proposed. One suggestion is that they were used for defense but their shape and size make this unlikely. It was also possible they were for feeding, but the most probable use for the claw was grasping objects such as tree trunks when rearing. Trackways of sauropods like Apatosaurus show that they may have had a range of around 25-40 km per day, and that they could potentially have reached a top speed of 20-30 km per hour. The slow locomotion of sauropods may be due to their minimal muscling, or to recoil after strides. A trackway of a juvenile has led some to believe that they were capable of bipedalism, though this is disputed. Diplodocids like Apatosaurus are often portrayed with their necks held high up in the air, allowing them to browse on tall trees. Some studies state diplodocid necks were less flexible than previously believed, because the structure of the neck vertebrae would not have allowed the neck to bend far upwards, and that sauropods like Apatosaurus were adapted to low browsing or ground feeding. 
Other studies by Taylor find that all tetrapods appear to hold their necks at the maximum possible vertical extension when in a normal, alert posture, they argue the same would hold true for sauropods barring any unknown, unique characteristics that set the soft tissue anatomy of their necks apart from that of other animals. Apatosaurus, like Diplodocus, would have held its neck angled upwards with the head pointing downwards in a resting posture. Kent Stevens and Michael Parrish state Apatosaurus had a great feeding range, its neck could bend into a U-shape laterally. The neck's range of movement would have also allowed the head to feed at the level of the feet. Matthew Kobley ETAL dispute this finding that large muscles and cartilage would have limited movement of the neck. They state the feeding ranges for sauropods like Diplodocus were smaller than previously believed, and the animals may have had to move their whole bodies around to better access areas where they could browse vegetation. As such, they might have spent more time foraging to meet their minimum energy needs. The conclusions of Kobley ETAL are disputed by Taylor, who analyzed the amount and positioning of intervertebral cartilage to determine the flexibility of the neck of Apatosaurus and Diplodocus. He found that the neck of Apatosaurus was very flexible. Given the large body mass and long neck of sauropods like Apatosaurus, physiologists have encountered problems determining how these animals breathed. Beginning with the assumption that, like crocodilians, Apatosaurus did not have a diaphragm, the dead space volume has been estimated at about 0.184 m3 for a 30 ton specimen. Paladino calculates its tidal volume at 0.904 m3 with an avian respiratory system, 0.225 m3 if mammalian and 0.019 m3 if reptilian. On this basis, its respiratory system would likely have been parabronchi, with multiple pulmonary air sacs as in avian lungs, and a flow-through lung. An avian respiratory system would need a lung volume of about 0.60 m3 compared with a mammalian requirement of 2.95 m3 which would exceed the space available. The overall thoracic volume of Apatosaurus has been estimated at 1.7 m3, allowing for a 0.50 m3, four-chambered heart and a 0.90 m3 lung capacity. That would allow about 0.30 m3 for the necessary tissue. Evidence for the avian system in Apatosaurus and other sauropods is also present in the pneumaticity of the vertebrae. Though this plays a role in reducing the weight of the animal, Weddell states they are also likely connected to air sacs, as in birds. James Spatilla ETAL concludes that the large body size of sauropods would have made them unable to maintain high metabolic rates because they would not have been able to release enough heat. They assumed sauropods had a reptilian respiratory system. Weddell says that an avian system would have allowed it to dump more heat. Some scientists state that the heart would have had trouble sustaining sufficient blood pressure to oxygenate the brain. Others suggest that the near-horizontal posture of the head and neck would have eliminated the problem of supplying blood to the brain because it would not have been elevated. James Farlow calculates that an Apatosaurus-sized dinosaur about 35 tons would have possessed 5.7 tons of fermentation contents. Assuming Apatosaurus had an avian respiratory system and a reptilian resting metabolism, Frank Paladino ETAL estimate the animal would have needed to consume only about 262 liters of water per day. A 1999 microscopic study of Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus bones concluded the animals grew rapidly when young and reached near adult sizes in about 10 years. In 2008, a study on the growth rates of sauropods was published by Thomas Lehman and Holly Woodward. 
They said that by using growth lines and length to mass ratios, Apatosaurus would have grown to 25 tons in 15 years, with growth peaking at 5,000 kg in a single year. An alternative method, using limb length and body mass, found Apatosaurus grew 520 kg per year, and reached its full mass before it was about 70 years old. These estimates have been called unreliable because the calculation methods are not sound, old growth lines would have been obliterated by bone remodeling. One of the first identified growth factors of Apatosaurus was the number of sacral vertebrae, which increased to five by the time of the creature's maturity. This was first noted in 1903 and again in 1936. Long bone histology enables researchers to estimate the age that a specific individual reached. A study by Eva Griebler ETAL examined long bone histological data and concluded the Apatosaurus sp. SMA 0014 weighed 20,206 kg, reached sexual maturity at 21 years, and died aged 28. The same growth model indicated Apatosaurus sp. BYU 6011732828 weighed 18,178 kg, reached sexual maturity at 19 years, and died aged 31. Compared with most sauropods, a relatively large amount of juvenile material is known from Apatosaurus. Multiple specimens in the OMNH are from juveniles of an undetermined species of Apatosaurus, this material includes partial shoulder and pelvic girdles, some vertebrae, and limb bones. OMNH juvenile material is from at least two different age groups and based on overlapping bones likely comes from more than three individuals. The specimens exhibit features that distinguish Apatosaurus from its relatives, and thus likely belong to the genus. Juvenile sauropods tend to have proportionally shorter necks and tails, and a more pronounced forelimb hind lime disparity than found in adult sauropods. An article published in 1997 reported research of the mechanics of Apatosaurus tails by Nathan Mirvold and paleontologist Philip J. Curry. Mirvold carried out a computer simulation of the tail, which in diplodocids like Apatosaurus was a very long, tapering structure resembling a bullwhip. This computer modeling suggested sauropods were capable of producing a whip-like cracking sound of over 200 decibels, comparable to the volume of a cannon being fired. A pathology has been identified on the tail of Apatosaurus, caused by a growth defect. Two caudal vertebrae are seamlessly fused along the entire articulating surface of the bone including the arches of the neural spines. This defect might have been caused by the lack or inhibition of the substance that forms intervertebral discs or joints. It has been proposed that the whips could have been used in combat and defense, but the tails of diplodocids were quite light and narrow compared to Shinosaurus and Mammonchysaurids, and thus to injure another animal with the tail would severely injure the tail itself. The Morrison Formation is a sequence of shallow marine and alluvial sediments which, according to radiometric dating, dates from between 156.3 Maya at its base, and 146.8 Maya at the top, placing it in the late Oxfordian, Kimmeridgian and early Tythonian stages of the late Jurassic period. This formation is interpreted as originating in a locally semi-arid environment with distinct wet and dry seasons. The Morrison Basin, where dinosaurs lived, stretched from New Mexico to Alberta and Saskatchewan, it was formed when the precursors to the front range of the Rocky Mountains started pushing up to the west. 
the deposits from their east-facing drainage basins were carried by streams and rivers and deposited in swampy lowlands, lakes, river channels, and floodplains. This formation is similar in age to the Laurinha Formation in Portugal and the Tendaguru Formation in Tanzania. Apatosaurus was the second most common sauropod in the Morrison Formation ecosystem, after Camarasaurus. Apatosaurus may have been more solitary than other Morrison Formation dinosaurs. Supersaurus has a greater total length and is the largest of all sauropods from the Morrison Formation. Apatosaurus fossils have only been found in the upper levels of the formation. Those of Apatosaurus ajax are known exclusively from the upper brushy basin member, about 150-151 Maya. Alusi fossils are rare, known only from one site in the upper brushy basin member, they date to the late Kimmeridgen stage, about 151 Maya. Additional Apatosaurus remains are known from similarly aged or slightly younger rocks, but they have not been identified as any particular species, and thus may instead belong to Brontosaurus. The Morrison Formation records a time when the local environment was dominated by gigantic sauropod dinosaurs. Dinosaurs known from the Morrison Formation include the theropods Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Ornitholsts, Sauropagonax, and Torvosaurus, the sauropods Brontosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Camarasaurus, and Diplodocus, and the Ornithischians Camtosaurus, Dryosaurus, and Stegosaurus. Apatosaurus is commonly found at the same sites as Allosaurus, Camarasaurus, Diplodocus, and Stegosaurus. Allosaurus accounted for 70-75% of theropod specimens and was at the top trophic level of the Morrison food web. Many of the dinosaurs of the Morrison formation are of the same genera as those seen in Portuguese rocks of the Laurinha formation mainly Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, and Torvosaurus or have a close counterpart Brachiosaurus and Luzutitan, Camtosaurus and Draconix, and Apatosaurus, and Dinhyrosaurus. Other vertebrates that are known to have shared this paleo environment include ray-finned fishes, frogs, salamanders, turtles, sphenodonts, lizards, terrestrial and aquatic crocodilomorphins, and several species of pterosaur. Shells of bivalves and aquatic snails are also common. The flora of the period has been evidenced in fossils of green algae, fungi, mosses, horsetails, cycads, ginkgos, and several families of conifers. Vegetation varied from river lining forests of tree ferns with fern understory, to fern savannas with occasional trees such as the Araucaria like conifer Brachyphyllum. <laughs>